Holy, holy, holy 
possibilities and just be an amazingly beautiful time every day you wake up and it's just glorious and then it's as if God is just showing off in the fall you feel that warm sun on your face and nice cool breeze and the colors and the, everything is just so beautiful But then you have to start thinking about winter. Winter is an interesting place for this ministry, this, this overflowing cup. Because in winter, we get to celebrate Christmas, and we get to see the snow, and we get to see. But winter is also a time when we have to think about the people that we know here that we love. Yes. Are they going to have a place to stay? Are they going to be warm? Are they going to be fed? And they're going to have their needs met. And that's what we do. That's what we all do here. We pitch in and we do whatever we have to do to make that happen. And we all get through it. But it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. It's a very real challenge. And as we celebrate Pastor Dave's 80th birthday coming up. And 48 and a half years of ministry at this place. Um... Every year we have to consider how do we get through this? And I can tell you how we get through it. We get through it together. We get through it by one person saying, I have a need, and another person saying, I may not be able to help you right now, but maybe somebody else can. Maybe I can, maybe I can give you a ride, but somebody else can give you a coat. Maybe somebody, maybe somebody has a meal. Maybe somebody has a word of encouragement. And each person has a part to play in being a family to someone in need. But when I say someone in need, I don't necessarily mean somebody who needs a coat or needs a meal. I mean someone who is in need also maybe of a blessing. You ever think about that? Maybe you ever think about God gives you the opportunity on a regular basis to be a blessing and you need that. You need that opportunity. You need to be that person in somebody else's life. Otherwise, life quickly loses its flavor. Fellowship. Yeah. Yeah. You need to be part of a family. You need to be part of fellowship. some fellowship. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd like to welcome anyone who's ever watching this or anyone who's in the room right now. Welcome to the Overflowing Cup Total Life Center Dysfunctional Fellowship Family. <laughs> Where we're just as messed up as the family you came from, but mm. we're going to get That's through it. Nope. We put the fun in dysfunctional. Yes, we life. put the fun in dysfunctional, as my beautiful wife says. But we're willing to help you. Yeah, you're, but no matter what, we're willing to help. You're, you're Even boss. Your boss. Your boss. My, my boss? Yeah. <laughs> I, I have two bosses. I have one up there, and then I have a much more immediate. <laughs> I was telling someone before the service, I think it might have been Brian, I don't know, I was telling someone that uh, in marriage I have learned one very, very important two-word phrase that has made life 
so much easier. And I would like to pass it on to all of you gentlemen. Um, there's two words that will help you immensely in your relationship with the fairer sex. And the first word is yes, and the second word is dear. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Yes, darling. You're right, darling. Yes, dear. You're right, darling. America. Uh, did I not see your your beautiful wife here somewhere? Yeah, she's gonna be joining yeah, she us. Like a she, she, just here. she she yeah, is like the Holy Spirit. Kind of just, through, yeah. Yes, you see where the wind has gone, but yeah, we're amazing. We're wonderful. John, would you care to uh, open us in prayer all over again? All over again? Yeah, we're gonna just scratch everything that's happened in the last eighteen minutes and just. Mm -hmm. Oh over. wow. That, that, 15-minute bass solo? The 15-minute bass solo, which was amazing, by the way. But if you're watching this later, uh, sorry, we just had to cut it out. But it was like the best 15-minute bass solo ever in the ever. history of... Ever. Yeah, it's, it's like when you invite someone to come to a church service, or you invite someone, like as a musician, if you invite someone to come to a gig, and they don't show up, the next time you see them, it's your duty to say... Oh, that was the best gig ever. Oh, man, I can't believe you missed that. Wow. I mean, just people were just absolutely blown away. It was incredible. There was backflips, and Jesus showed up, and it was incredible. <laughs> oh, you weren't there? Oh, I forgot. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you missed it. The only thing that would have made that solo better would be a little cowbell. If we had had cowbell with your bass solo, Here we it would have been better. Oh, You're right. Okay, so... I think if it's okay with you, instead of praying, I'd like to offer my excuse for why I'm late. Oh, it's actually kind of, um, my, uh, my mom fell on October 2nd and broke her right hip, and last February she had fallen and broken her left one. So she's in a rehab facility in Kenosha, which is an hour from my house. And I left work early at 4 o'clock. I worked from home. I drove all the way down to Kenosha to bring her <coughs> chocolate milk and applesauce and a pasty for dinner because apparently the food at the rehab place sucks. And when I arrived, she was sitting at um, the table in the dining area with two other little old ladies. And I put, plopped the applesauce and the chocolate milk down in front of her and, and said, here you go, Mom. And she looked at me with this look on her face that I only see in situations like this. And she patted me on the knee and she proudly told the women, that's my baby. Aww. And then I went and took the pasty and I heated it up in the microwave and I came back and I put it on the plate in front of her and I said, here's your pasty, Mom. And she just straightened up just as far as that little 80-year-old body could straighten up. And she proclaimed to the entire room, that's my baby girl, and she brought me dinner tonight. I don't have to eat this stuff. <laughs> and then she proceeded to complain about it's got too much pepper, you didn't bring me any ketchup. Aww. But for that one brief and shining moment, I was the wow. star of the show uh, and she showed that <laughs> underneath all of that ick she really does love me with all of her heart oh, so nice. i'm sorry i'm late but that was worth being late for yes. oh, yeah. 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 but pray for her because she's only kind of saved and she's i don't know what's going to happen next and i'm frantic so her name's james so if you want to just pray for her just pray for her yeah, yeah well I want you to keep my dad in prayer because he needs to get saved. And plus, he's in hospice and he's going downhill very quickly. Oh, I'm sorry. You had talked about him a couple weeks ago. Yeah, well, unfortunately, it's getting to the point where it's going to happen one of these days now. So let's keep Dennis wow. in prayer. Yeah. What's his name again? Dennis. 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 Yeah. Okay. I'd like to point out that that not one of us... None of us here are God. None of us here really know. None of us can know another person's heart. So we can pray and love and hope and be anxious about someone else's salvation, but none of us know because God knows. And, uh, and that's okay. In the end, God loves each one of us individually so much and we can be anxious, but I can't help but think that God's got it in the end. That God's got each one of us in the end. Yeah. 
I agree. I look back on my life and I can see spots where it had to have been his hand that I needed to sit in here. Oh, sure. So I, I agree oh, with you. Many yeah. times, many, many, many a times. Yep. Yeah. You know, strangely, I, I believe that about you, Kevin. <laughs> 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 I mean that God loves you. That's what I meant. Many times that he, he was looking out for me. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. Because I was... Yeah. Many stupid, crazy, wild things. He loved you in spite of yourself? Are you kidding? I, I can't help... Again, this is just a hunch, but could it be that God was up in heaven watching you do stupid stuff going... That's my boy. <laughs> Check it out. Check it out. You know, like showing the replay to all the angels. And... Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Moses, can you believe what you just <laughs> Yeah, our friend Tom Matthew, who wrote a couple of the first couple songs we played, um, he has this thing that he says where our music, our art, our anything that we do for the Lord, it may sound bad. It, it may it may be little rough and ugly, but to him, it's like refrigerator art. Like when your little child draws something with a crayon and you have to ask them what it is because you don't, and of course they say something like, well, that's you, Daddy. And, and God just puts it up there and goes, my kid made that. My kid made that. You ever walk into somebody's house and it's absolutely pristine, it's perfectly clean, everything in it is really nice, but then you look at the refrigerator and there's just this scribbled, jumbled up mess of mm. stuff that's got like chocolate stains on it, and you know that that's apparent. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So we come here every Wednesday night and we make refrigerator art for God. Monster had pictures of what I used to draw back Aww. when I was in the third grade and fourth grade when I was really good at drawing on it. Mm -hmm. I had pictures of the house with, with the garage and my 55 Chevy and 56 Chevy pickup trucks. Because <laughs> I could draw back then. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah, girl. And your mother still has it She's because she own. loves your little boy, which you'll always be. Yeah. Yeah. My mom passed last year and uh, she did hospice at our house. So I was in the room when she died and one of the last coherent things that she said about a week before she passed was, I'm proud of you. You're going to have a good life. And she meant it. She meant it. So, uh, yeah. It reminded me that we get increasingly um, elaborate and it just gets bigger and more things and takes more people all in an attempt to capture what one person would do in their bedroom just sitting alone or under a tree by a river just praising god nothing fancy and most of the songs that you hear in any church just started off life with just one person sitting at a piano or sitting at a guitar or, you know, just crying out. And then it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and suddenly there's like 35 people involved in the production, all to try to capture the intimacy of that one single moment. You did a good job though, Sunday. That was good. You know, it's funny. Um, I got a text from you two. I don't know which one of you <laughs> sent it, but I got a, I got a text from you guys but after <laughs> after we were done on Sunday night. I get this text, and it says, "Look, you're on TV at our house," and it's a <laughs> screenshot of the video feed that they were watching on televisions. I felt like a big star. Aww. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm seen as far away as Whitewater. So, uh, <laughs> way, over. Yeah, way over in Whitewater. Let me tell you, the TV has never looked better, ever. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. Uh, yeah. It was quite an ordeal to get him to figure out how to cast it to the TV. Before. 
I know, I know my kids know how to do it. I don't, um, yeah. That's Every once in a while, it'll say, send a TV or whatever it's called on my, and I just don't touch any button on my phone. I just, yeah, yeah. That technology you were just talking Something about. might blow up, yeah, yeah. Let's see, is it? Better, the worst part is avoid something else. Oh, I didn't want to point that out! <laughs> Oh, is that me from last Sunday? Yeah, it was. It's the weirdest thing. I, I, I was not feeling well when I began. And I was not feeling well when I got done. And I wasn't sick. I wasn't physically ill. I just, spiritually, I was just really shaken up that night. And, uh, and then, over the course of the next couple of days, I had one message after another by people saying, wow, that really touched me. I'm like, okay, but... I would have. Good. I would have felt better not feeling terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. It was just. But the way you brought everything yeah. out, it was awesome. It was just yeah. a good way of. Sometimes you just have to kind of pour yourself out yeah. and yeah. see what happens. And if you're looking for smooth and professional, <laughs> you're gonna have to wait until Dave preaches again because I'm not. I'm not that person. But there's a song um, that did start off actually just me in my in my uh, bedroom with a guitar, just sort of pouring myself out to God. Um, it's called Wash Away. Let it rain on me, Jesus. I'm feeling tired and heartbroken today. I know you've got, know you've got a, a healing for me.
just say hey guys. <laughs> We're finishing this for you. Wow. That one brought tears to my eyes. <laughs> you know, when we first got here about a year and a half ago, I tell this story about you often. We, we didn't know everybody's name. So we were, uh, you know, having to, having to figure out people's names and, and Maquette's very good at remembering names. I'm not. And so she said something about Kevin. And I said, which, which one's Kevin? And she's describing you. And, I, and finally I said, oh, you mean the sane one in the back? I said, yeah, the one that seems like he's got his shit together the, the in the back that, of the room. Yeah. <laughs> I learned your name before I learned the truth. So either way, I now know who you are. Because <laughs> that's how my, uh, my beautiful, very holy and pastoral wife talks. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I love you. <laughs> Mark, will you live Vietnam? Me? Yeah. I am a Cold War veteran. I was in from 1985 to 1989. Yeah, this year's still United veteran. States Air Force. Yeah, well, thank you for serving. You are welcome. I spent. Uh, uh, after basic training, I went to Denver for mm -hmm. several months for tech school, and then I went to the uh, the war zone that is Montana. Ah. Um, and uh, I was a graphic artist and a photographer at a missile base mm. in Montana. And I liked Montana, and I liked the Air Force, and I'm glad I did it. Um, you know, it's funny, it only took four years of my life, but I still get medical benefits. Um, I'm a disabled vet, so I still get a check every month for that, and I get to be a veteran, which is something you can't just say, you have to actually do it. And, yeah, you have to. Um, now, when I get around real veterans who've actually done something, like real combat, then I just keep my mouth shut, and I just go, oh, thank you for your service. <laughs> Because believe me, you got guys like Dave Anderson right here mm -hmm. who actually did it. No excuses. Yeah. Vietnam, the whole, the whole thing. And you know. <clears throat> we'll ride it on. Train to glory. Train to glory. Running on. Riding on that train Different journey But we get to glory just the same I see my mother And my father All my friends They all my neighbors Riding along with me Oh baby long But I know glory's waiting there for me
guitar at home, then we just left you the spots where you could play the solos. Isn't that great? We're like a backing track right yeah. here. <laughs> and Dusty, if you're watching this, uh, Dusty's our guitarist. If, if you're watching this, Dusty, come home. We miss you. All is forgiven. Please. Just come <laughs> home. Wow. <laughs> uh, you know what? We're going to play a couple more songs. What would you like to play, Don? What would you like to sing? Dom would like to play bass. A 15 minute solo. Oh, I can't see what's in order. That'd be the second one. You know what song I do, do that I really like? I like Dance Along the Road. Oh, all right. I actually happen to have it. I probably I don't, don't have it here, so. Can you see that? Uh, maybe. Bring it up a little I should know it. It's my song, but I don't always have them memorized. What we need is a healing service for my oh, eyes. All right. Can you see that? Yes. Awesome. Right. Used to be a worship pastor at a church where they would do series of messages. And it was, you know, they do four or five messages all on a central theme. And then they would move on to another one. It was, it was very well organized and very well thought out, which is why I'm not there anymore. <laughs> but they were very well organized and they had their act together and they did it in a very slick, very professional way. And there's a lot to be said about that um, and a lot of good things about that. Um, but I had the ability to just write whatever I wanted to write and throw it into the mix. And there was the challenge for every series to write a song that we could then play throughout the series. And uh, this was one of those. It was a, it was specifically a, uh, a series about finding God along the road or joy along the road or something. Um, and I knew that the senior pastor loved to dance. He just loved to dance. He was a very graceful human being. So uh, I wrote this song, Dance Along the Road, which sort of hit all of the Ticked all of the boxes to, you know, suck up to my boss. <laughs> <laughs> now, having said that, I'm going to play something very serious, so you should pay attention. <laughs> Let the watchers watch And the doubters doubt Let the mourners weep And the shouters shout Let all God's children Oh uh -huh. 
So I made it up as I went along. <laughs> yeah, that's that's why the chords weren't the same at the end of the chord. Okay, well you want that to be minor? Or no, no, no. Whatever it says there is right. I was just sort of I bluffing. You, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> and maybe that's why we don't play that song very often. It's a good song. But you should. It's a good song. Yeah. And so I'm going to do this, and then we'll do that, and sort of see what happens. Oh, we were doing it in D. God love me, this reality to accept the things I cannot change. Things I can And the wisdoms I know mm, To know the difference God grant me The serenity To accept the things and I change And the courage to change The things I can Change. 